This time, we are going to study how overarm throw strategy could be analyzed using dynamics and muscle activation. Um, actually, this overarm throw motion, uh, like a pitching motion, are of big interest for biomechanists and clinicians because there are reported um, injuries for the rotational cup for the uh, amateur player and the pro players for the baseball. And since this is a three-dimensional motion and the shoulder has like high degree of freedom, like a universal joint, um, analyzing the biomechanics for the shoulder joint is very um, complex and complicated. Um, and then still there are many researches going on. And then if you are interested in, I would encourage you to you know, search for the recent uh, papers about uh, those analysis and how those motions are related for the injury and so on. This chapter is only uh, focusing on how those sequential motion for the throwing could be analyzed in terms of mechanical and uh, muscle activation modeling. So to do, to do that, we'd like to make, um, uh, make set up some assumption for to make these complicated 3D structures simple. Like um, trunk is kept stationary. Um, like when we usually handling the upper arm motion, which is generated by the whole body movement. This is kind of approach that we often um, uh, um, introduce. Like um, instead of solving them all, once we measure the shoulder movement from the um, the experimental setup, we can just add an acceleration at the pivot point. So separate out the upper arm. Uh, I think um, it's a good starting point. It makes the assumption that trunk kept stationary. If that occurs, then the shoulder could be an origin. So if I um, make this one as a shoulder point at the origin, so this is gonna be the upper arm. And then to make the um, modeling simple, instead of having the rigid body motion, well, I'm going to put a point mass at the massless arm of the upper arm and the lower arm as well. And yeah, since it, uh, even though there are three-dimensional rotation could be possible with respect to the shoulder, at this point, let's just assuming that the um, upper arm is only make a flexion. So uh, from the backward to the forward, the direction to you uh, you like to pitch, to throw the ball. It's only this direction, are, uh, so the arm is only moving in the XY plane. For the elbow, elbow, let's assume that even though there are relative motions between the uh, upper arm and the lower arm, let's make it as um, 90 degrees perpendicular and fixed angle to make it simple. And then this one is only rotates with respect to those axes through the upper arm so that only um, arm rotations exist. Okay, so we sort of simplify these uh, dimensions. So even though it looks like a three-dimensional, it's like a one moving in the XY plane, the other is moving with respect to the rotational axis here. Okay, so with that, uh, we could formulate the kinematics for each point mass, one in the upper arm and the one in the lower arm. Okay. So the uh, upper arm uh, point mass description is somewhat easy. You can just do the uh, uh, polar uh, coordinate approach like IL sine theta, cosine theta. But for the upper arm, it has um, some uh, combinations for the uh, lower arm segment and the angle theta 2, which is this term. Okay. And also those projections should be split out as x and y components. So you have to also consider the um, theta 1 components multiply for that. And also addition for the um, from the origin, you should also add the effect for the theta 1. And for the z component, it's a simply um, lc2 sine theta 2. Okay, so um, since it's anyway three-dimensional, so um, equations of motion um, could be um, complicated for the coordinate wise. So we are going to use the Lagrange's equation that's handling the scalar, the energy to obtain the equations of motion. So remember when you set the two uh, generalized coordinate, you have um, uh, Lagrange derivative with respect to the uh, time derivative, angular, um, the time rate of the uh, generalized coordinate and the time derivative and its put, uh, position derivative for, for um, uh, theta one and theta two. Okay, so here we are going to handle only kinetic energy because assuming the potential energy change is assumed to be small compared to the very quick movement of the arm, so we only uh, consider the kinetic energy. 
So the kinetic energy to force mass on the upper arm is going to be obtained in a simple manner. For the second one, instead of writing down all the sine and, um, sine and cosine, I will just write them down as x1 dot, x2 dot, and z dot uh, square term. Okay. So the total energy we want to examine is um, total energy will be then the upper arm, the lower arm, and the ball, um, the kinetic energy. And work, uh, external work performed by the muscle is like one in the shoulder, one apply the shoulder, or it should be one here, and the one apply for the elbow. So if you plug that in to obtain the Lagrange equations of motion, what you can get is when the time is less than tau, um, that's simply like um, sim simple like a torque equals I alpha kind of form. So the elbow has been fixed. 90 degrees and it moves all together with the upper and lower arm so simple uh, equation for the theta one and time equals greater than tau you can split it out the state from theta one and theta two it moves separate so theta one um, only the uh, moment of inertia component and there is also a coupling effect by the uh, theta two and same for the theta two and all those alpha, beta, gamma parameters are related about the uh, bo uh, body parameters for the uh, model. And uh, the details, what you can refer from this um, original uh, paper. So uh, the equations of motion have uh, two sets. The first, you should solve the equation, uh, equation for this one, uh, only for the, um, the joint torque at the shoulder. And as time greater than tau, uh, you should uh, handle both uh, torque on the upper arm, uh, the shoulder, and the elbow. So the very first step is what we have just done, obtain the equations of motion of the uh, not a stand space. This is for the overarm throwing. And the, you have to set the simulation parameters like um, pretty much similar to um, the real throwing. So assuming that you are extending your um, shoulder very back, that's zero degree and then maybe your arm is about uh, tilted about 30 degrees and with zero angular velocity you take the integral of the equations of motion up to the release when is the release so either uh, you your uh, limit of the arm configuration reaches to its limit then that's the point you should stop integration so for, so for for example since you are starting from the very back if your shoulder is uh, uh, you know, facing the uh, upward, the forward, the point that you have to release the ball, then you should actually release the ball. So that will stop the um, integration. Or uh, based on the observation, we found that the uh, uh, upper arm it released the ball somewhat uh, forward, um, upward tilted. Okay, so that's the angle approximately 120 degrees. So those two um, observed parameters um, was set as a reference when we stop integration. And what we observed is the ball speed. Okay, oh typo here, sorry. Uh, ball speed, what is the uh, um, release uh, speed of the ball as a function of tau? So if there is any optimal tau, exist that actually validate our hypothesis. So interpret the result in terms of validation of hypothesis. And also you can do the parameter study to examine your applied assumption is still um, valid and doesn't change your main claim of your study. Okay, so for the simulation results as a function of tau, uh, function of delta t and the dimensionless speed of the ball, ta-da! Yeah, there's optimality um, exists. So uh, if you have a certain amount of delta, that will maximize the ball speed. Okay, so activating both uh, instead of activating both muscles together, you should have certain um, delay apply to get a maximum performance. So your simulated uh, maximum value uh, is obtained like this. And then the, these are about half of the, what really happened. So what causes those huge error? Well, since a uh, human body is actually moving forward, so trunk is definitely not a stationary. So you should gain the uh, velocity from them. Okay, leg and torso motion are ignored, but that should be modeled. That will actually definitely enhance the speed. And also um, instead of, um, um, elbow rotation, there's a, I mean, those are not fixed as a 90 degrees, right? So there are other joint um, motion exist in, 
instead of a sort of a finite um, two torques application. So as you add up more energy input term, like a joint torque application, you will gain more energy. So those simplification actually um, uh, could be explained um, could explain the discrepancy between those, those results, like uh, underestimation of the ball speed. What I'd like to uh, talk about here is how about our muscle model? So the muscle model, we assume that force velocity matters and force length curve doesn't really um, contribute to the, um, the results. And then let's examine if what really happened. So even though the force length curve has this um, shape, I mean, this uh, changes like so if you have a elbow joint length changes you have a, a I mean significant drop for the forces that but we assume that uh, it, this value is kind of constant so uh, it's not really isometric as, um, contraction but we just assume that how those uh, affect the results so instead of having constant value we may do some simple approximations like a linear approximation so as a function of joint angle theta we could actually reduce the force from constant value to the reduced value and what would be the result the results still show that there is, a, of course, the del uh, difference, uh, optimal time delay, but the optimality still exists. Okay, so for real, true um, force length relationship, if we implement it, there's still the optimality holds and the uh, absolute value changes. So what this tells us about this parameter study is force length curve doesn't change the um, optimality trends okay so even though it changes the delay value um, those optimality mostly um, contributed by the force velocity curve characteristics that's what we could tell okay so um, also you know doing the parameter study to check your assumption validity and also you can examine if your model results kind of make sense or feasible results Okay, so for example, if we could examine the two extreme cases, like delta t is very small and delta t is very large. So uh, basically, those motion, you know, angle for the um, arm will just just monotonically increase, right? And with the time delay, um, the upper arm moves um, increase again, but with the steeper slope because it's a lighter mass, right? So if we have a too short um, delay, that means you're uh, upper arm moves so quickly and reaches to its maximum um, anatomical range. So without gaining um, energy from the uh, upper arm rotation, force should be released. And how about the large delta T? For the large delta T, your uh, upper arm will reach to its maximum value, and then you are not really gaining the, um, the velocity from the forearm motion. So that's not... Or, um, um, ideal either, right? So there should be some in between uh, best, I mean, optimal value that uh, give you uh, enough time for catch up the speed by the shoulder flexion and the elbow rotation. So that makes sense that we have this optimality behavior for the ball up, um, overarm throwing as a function of sequential delay tau. So once you set up the hypothesis or make a problem statement you want to examine through um, for your research, um, you should make all the assumptions in the very beginning. And then um, later, you should check your results um, and do the interpretation if your hypothesis or your problem statement has resolved and all those assumptions you applied are still um, wouldn't really change your main claim. That's important. Okay, in this chapter 3.1, uh, we gone, we've gone through a brief uh, under, um, uh, introductions about how muscle contraction mechanism uh, works and how we can mathematically model them using Hill's model and using very simplified version of muscle model and point mass approach, simple approach, we were able to um, understand long and high jump uh, mechanical uh, high jump strategy in a mechanical point of view as well as uh, for the throwing cases. So uh, there are many recent studies about um, analyzing uh, more complicated human motion with uh, advanced muscle models. So if you are interested in, I strongly encourage you to um, um, 
find some、um, good articles. Thank you for listening.